What do you reckon is the fluffiest animal you've ever come across? I saw a big ass dog once. His tail was massive. Maybe a bit longer? Well, no, his tail was like medium length. I mean, the intro, but ah, fine. We'll, we'll put that in. Ah, there it is. There's the joke. He fell for it straight in. Look at that. Catch me a Brad. It's really in nice and slow. Immediately. Too easy, mate. Too fucking easy. According to mammal experts and fuzz enthusiasts, the chinchilla possesses, quite literally, the densest and softest fur of any animal to live on dry land. A quirk that means that a chinchilla, not unlike a mogwai, can never ever get wet. So I've actually never held a chinchilla. You're missing out, but continue. How soft are we talking? Well, I think the best thing I can use as an example of how soft and luxurious the fur of a chinchilla is, is that from the moment the creature was first discovered, like living in like, the mountains of South America, it was almost immediately hunted to extinction by people wanting to look especially pimping. I do love inconveniencing the underclass. Dickhead fur coat owning humans aside, the chinchilla is also known as being especially popular as a pet because look how fucking cute they are. Just like Brad putting lots of like, you know, stock royalty free images of chinchillas behind me, please. As many as you can find. Why not? Just coat that entire green screen with chinchilla. I'll, I'll, I'll go on to like Pixabay and just type in chinchilla. <laughs> to find all those royalty free images of chinchillas and put hundreds of them behind. Not hundreds, that's, that's a lot of rendering time, you know what I mean? Coat this green screen with fucking chinchillas. Those things are cute as balls. Did you just consider rendering time, Carl? Yes. You considered my needs. Oh, fuck off. Oh, you I thought you were just... going to make the joke of, like you said, coat the background in chinchillas. Oh, right. Which is the joke I was trying to make and I thought you'd pick up on, but obviously you're a bit slow on that today. And so we're back to normal. <laughs> ah! The balance is restored. All joking aside, chinchillas are cute as fuck. They look like a ball of wet string someone rolled around a barbershop floor. It's ridiculous how fluffy and fuzzy they actually are. You make me want a chinchilla. No, because they're very difficult to look after, because obviously they require specialised care, which uh, hasn't stopped people buying them anyway and mistreating them. Because a counterintuitive thing about owning a chinchilla is that you are never allowed to get it wet or allow it to bathe. Why? Because the, the fur, like, you know, the ultra soft mega fur of the chinchilla is so thick, so fluffy and so absorbent that if a chinchilla gets wet, it can never ever dry and obviously that will cause like mold and fungus to grow in its fur which is very difficult to see because it's so fucking fluffy which can adversely affect the health of the chinchilla so you're not allowed to ever let them get wet i wasn't joking like they are like mogwai what if it rains in its native habitat though well they hide under stuff Presumably, whenever it rains in the area chinchillas are endemic to, like, you might as well just write off 10% of the chilla po chinchilla population. <laughs> so obviously they can get wet, but it's advised to never let that happen because obviously it's so difficult for them to dry themselves out. You have to do it. And obviously they're small creatures, they're prey animals. They don't like being handled all that much, which is not a good idea. And what you have to do instead with chinchillas, and this is like my favorite fact about them, is instead of allowing them to bathe in water, you have to buy like fine powder, like pumice stone, that sort of thing, and let them roll around in that. And they have like what's called a sand bath. And another counterintuitive thing about chinchillas, you think, oh, rolling around in sand must make them dirty, and like nothing could be further from the truth, because the sand like basically exfoliates their skin, as well as cleans their fur, making it more luxurious and soft. So they don't, they rarely have like dead skin cells or anything like that in them, which means that chinchillas are almost entirely hypoallergenic, which means a person who's ordinarily allergic to cats and dogs and things like that can, without issue, shove their face into a pile of chinchillas and not sneeze. They are so fluffy that you cannot be allergic. Like, what's the dog where that's true? Is it like labradoodles or something? Like labradoodles are hypoallergenic? And so I figured, well, then what I meant, I thought it meant they had like bleach or something in them. And like when they rolled around on the floor, they'd clean your floor. <laughs> I'd only ever seen that shit. Do you know, like, uh, like cleaning stuff for your clothes? I thought it meant that the dogs just smelt like fucking um, uh, Daz or some shit like that. Because <laughs> I was young when I first heard that term. I'm like, why would you buy a dog that just smells like Daz? What's that about? So imagine you'd be one of those guys who puts like a mop, the cat on the end of the mop and cleans the floor with it. Oh, do, you, do you ever seen all that shit people do? Like the baby crawlers you can get. 
where you put, it's got all the mop material on the bottom, so as your baby's learning to crawl, it cleans your floor. <laughs> so you made the comparison that uh, chinchillas are like mogwai. Yes. But if you recall, there's more than one rule to a mogwai. Yes. Never get it wet, never feed it after midnight, which is a bullshit rule that makes no sense. We're skipping straight over that one. It's always after midnight somewhere. What about if the mogwai's on a plane? Does the rules like, you know, pertain to time zones? We don't fucking know, that's bullshit. But the third rule, which remember is, never allow them to be in direct sunlight. And you know what so happens to be a care guideline for chinchillas? Never let them get in direct sunlight because they don't like it. But you have to admit, it's a little bit of a coincidence that Mogwai, the two main rules are don't get them wet, don't put them in the sun. The two, and they're obviously Mogwai, super fluffy and adorable. And the chinchilla, also super adorable and fluffy and you want to hug it all the time, also cannot be like left out in direct sunlight and also cannot get wet. Obviously chinchillas don't explode into skeletons or multiply with water, but come on. I think I'm pretty on point with this comparison here, don't you, Brad? I didn't know that chinchillas couldn't be put in direct sunlight. It's like, what the fuck? That's a stupid ass rule. Like, what animal can you not put in direct sunlight other than like a fucking fish or some shit? I know chinchillas, none of that. Too fluffy. So they can't regulate body heat very well. So if you put them in direct sunlight, they'd burn. Do you reckon people watching this who are like 12 hours behind, it's like 2 a.m. and now looking over at their chin chinchilla thinking, I'm gonna take that football away from you. I don't trust it. I don't trust that chinchilla. I don't. Tr I, I know it's not a real hard and fast rule, but I don't trust it all that much. But think about this for a moment. Right? This creature is literally too fluffy for its own good because it can neither regulate its own body temperature properly or get wet and was hunted to near extinction the moment it was discovered because it's so fucking fluffy. Holy shit. And as well, I'm thinking, how do you hunt a chinchilla? And I'm just imagining a guy walking around just picking him up and putting him in a sack. I don't think chinchillas seem all that hard to hunt. A but, chinchilla sack. But, you put your hand in, it's like having your hand massaged. I'm just imagining like they grow on bushes or some shit. Like, that's how easy it is. Like just all over the floor. Like, like those cotton wool bushes you see in places. Yeah. Does that mean though that you'd have like a really hard time getting your chinchilla coat dry? Yeah. Yeah. Got, so well, if they, it ever rained when you're wearing your chinchilla coat, you have to take it home and spend fucking hours trying to dry it. We out. have to get like properly professionally yeah. cleaned. Yeah, they are a pain in the ass to look after notoriously. And like that's one of the reasons they cost so much money because the maintenance on them is so high. Not to mention, chinchilla's not about this big. Yeah. How big's a coat? That's a lot of chinchilla there, mate, and it's like, ah no. So let's just move swiftly past that bit of like, you know thinking about how many chinchillas you'd have to kill to make a chinchilla coat. It's like that moment in The Simpsons, isn't it, where Krusty the Clown's wearing the fur coat and they throw like the, the bucket of red paint on him. <laughs> Furry's murder! And then he, and he goes, oh, get me my replacement. He's like the panda fucking suit. And he's like, he goes, where are the babies? And he puts the shoes on and the shoes are the babies. Now the babies. It's like... <laughs> Holy fuck, that's so mean. And there was the entire Mr. Burns episode, he's like got like, a suit made out of vampire bat and he wants to make just a suit out of dogs for some reason. But a greyhound for tuxedo would be best. A tuxedo made out of greyhound? What the fuck? That would be the most uncomfortable shit ever. So like, imagine a greyhound fur. <laughs> that would be awful. Oh, fucking God, why would you wear that shit? It's like a lot like in uh, Rush Hour 2, right at the very end of that film where they go into like the uh, the suit shop with all the money and they put like um, Chris Tucker in like head to toe in crocodile. It's like crocodile and like crocodiles and like the comfiest thing to wear. It's like, why not just silk all up in that bitch? Like, no, nah, crocodile now. I want to dress in like the skin of a dead animal. I should point out though, that it's not all bad for the chinchilla because although yes, it can't get wet or be in direct sunlight for all that too long without like, you know, risking its own life, a side effect of being so damn fuzzy is that chinchillas are largely immune to getting fleas and parasites because, and I am not making this up, the fur of the chinchilla is so dense that parasites and fleas suffocate in it. And I'm now wondering to myself, how much do I have to pay to genetically engineer a dog that fucking fuzzy? It might be worth telling people why it's probably not a good idea for them to all go out and buy chinchillas right now. Yeah, because it seems to be a trend on YouTube, isn't it? Like people are like, oh, look at this weird exotic pet that I own that I don't actually know how to look after. I think I've seen like, oh yeah, I own like a panther and it lives in my one bedroom flat. It's like, that's not good for the animal. Give it to a fucking zoo who knows how to look after it. So as much as you may think that you can look after a chinchilla and how cute they are based on all the photos of chinchillas we put up, 
Um, they do require highly specialised care and they are a significant time and money sink. So maybe don't go out and buy a chinchilla unless you know exactly what you're fucking doing. Because there's, like, there's nothing sadder to me than stories you hear about like people buying pets because they're cute and then getting rid of them after the fact. It's, like, it's the most heartbreak, so don't fucking do that. And uh, yeah, I personally, like, there's so many pets that I want, but I know like, in my heart of hearts, like, as, as much as I would like try to look after it, I can't. So I've, I've come to the conclusion that I can probably get a fish. And that's about it. I can look after a fish. I can ensure a fish is well looked after. I can clean a fish tank. I've got the time and money to do that. If we take away the, uh, the, the cost and the risk of actually owning a particular pet, yes. what animal would you want? I don't know, like a badger or something. I want like a honey badger. Just it's so fucking cool. I want just like, because they're so cute and so curious. But at the same time, no one's going to fucking steal that shit. Because if you break into my house to steal shit and there's a badger in that house... Chances are you're leaving with less than you entered that room because your testicles are fucking gone immediately. And if you manage to protect them, your claws are dead. Yeah, it's like the, the honey badger will protect my house. But yeah, as, as much as I would like art stuff, like you, I said, there's loads of YouTube videos out there people who own these weird exotic pets. And I say that they're probably kind of irresponsible because you're just basically encouraging people to go out and get a pet they don't know how to look after. Yeah. And that's the bad thing. It's like Game of Thrones did it because um, obviously the weird, the big wolf dogs that they specially bred for the show and um, encourage a lot of people to go out and buy those type of dogs, like huskies and things. And the thing about huskies is they need to like be walked like miles per day because they're like so energetic. And there's a horribly depressing story about like a couple of months after Game of Thrones aired, animal shelters like across the UK and like in other places were like, yeah, we've just full of huskies now. Because loads of people went out and bought them because they thought they looked cute. Realised I have to walk this thing for like basically half a marathon every day. Fuck that and just gave it away. And a friend of mine actually ended up adopting one because he felt so fucking bad for the like, you know, we went to like an animal pound found one. And the thing is, huskies aren't fucking cheap. That's a thousand pound investment for a dog. And people were just giving it the fuck away because they couldn't handle it. And it's just a really sad story I hate. And whenever I see those kind of videos, I'm like, Someone out there is watching this, they're going to buy one of these animals, not know how to look after it, and it's going to die. And that's your fucking fault. And it's awful. I think, um, was it teacup pigs, one of the most famous examples? Yeah, because the teacup pigs, they're not real. Fun fact, te there's no such thing. It's, they were piglets that people were selling yeah. and saying they'll never get beyond this size. And so many people bought them thinking, oh, it's cute. It got to be like 50 stunt, and they're like, what do I do with this thing? And then just like gave it away. But there's loads of celebrities who still have their pigs. Yeah, Paris Hilton still, still got hers. Because yeah. obviously she's got the means to look after it, which is fine. If a celebrity wants to buy an expensive pet, I trust a multimillionaire to have, at the very least, the money to invest to make sure that animals looked after, like yeah. Mike Tyson, his tigers and that shit. But if, like, when you see these stories, like, ordinary people, like, oh, yeah, this man domesticated a fox. All I think is, like, some dickhead out there is going to go out and just steal a fox, and it's going to be horribly looked after, and it's this guy's fucking fault who made this YouTube video. Don't do that. So I don't want to be that guy. Do not buy a chinchilla unless you've got the time on and you do the research to ensure that you can look after it. I do not want no chinchilla deaths on my conscience from some dickhead who's going to like put it in his sink like while he's getting on trying to get a wash. Now, fuck that. I don't want that on my conscience. No. Stop it. Bad. <laughs> Good morning, buy a fish instead. Get a fucking hamster. They're easy to look after. Unless it's those hamsters that eat each other, don't buy them. Hamsters do that sometimes. Really? Yeah. Some hamsters just like eat each other, they attack. Very vicious. Yeah, do research on your pets, folks. It's important. <laughs>